This is a quick explanation of why the Flat Earth will ultimately reach a critical mass in mainstream media. It occurred to me, oddly enough, while browsing through some movie reviews on a YouTube channel called Red Letter Media. One review in particular, covering the release of the 2009 Star Trek movie reboot, introduced an interesting concept called the blurring effect that, simply stated, means that as time passes and media becomes more broad, there are no new stories, so the older ones have to be retooled because as a species, we are drawn to the familiar memories. I'm going to play a clip from that review at the end of this, but before that, I'd like to explain how the flat earth theory fits perfectly into the blurring effect on multiple levels and why it is so irresistible to the average person. The blurring effect states that as media expands from the simple to the complex, it becomes diluted and loses a lot of its potency because there are so many more variations of it. It can apply to several different things, including history, but works best when used in a media context. Media was in print format for centuries, but didn't branch out until the invention of radio, then movies, then basic television, where it hovered until the internet was created. After that, media forms grew so quickly that they outpaced the average person's ability to absorb even a fraction of them. Why is this important? Because people like the familiar and it resonates with them. I know you're saying that people like new things. Yes and no. You want new things, but they appeal to you more if they are grounded in something you already know. Take the movie Avatar. Seems new, 3D, new type of aliens, but we've seen aliens before, and the storyline was just a rework of Dances with Wolves from 1990, which won Best Picture, which is why that plotline was chosen. They already knew it was going to resonate with people, so they just adapted it to space. Now, Avatar didn't win Best Picture, although it was nominated it lost to The Hurt Locker, which no one saw, but the director was formerly married to James Cameron, who directed Avatar, and the Academy thought it would add some drama because a dramatic awards show needs extra drama, and besides, war movies tend to rank higher for political reasons. That is, unless we're talking about Saving Private Ryan, the epic World War II movie, which lost to Shakespeare in Love, but don't get me started on that one. The point is that because media is getting stretched very thin because of all the new forms, movie and television companies are doing everything they can to reconnect people with older entertainment subjects because they used to own a bigger piece of the media pie. If you think that you're seeing a lot more sequels, prequels, and reboots, well, you're right. That's pretty much all there is now. Anyone that has followed my work knows that movie content peaked in 1999, and now we're clinging on to anything that is relatable. All those new comic book movies are just connections back in time. Superman was created in 1938. Captain America was 1941. There are now so many media choices that if you want people to choose your content, you have a solid edge if you have something that connects back to their childhood. And that is why Flat Earth is resonating so strongly, despite the massive competition from entertainment-based media. It predates all of them by thousands of years, and it's simple. Children may not know the details of the Flat Earth models, but they know the words, and they hear them throughout their early lives. This means that at the very least, they have an opinion on the subject, and that is the most powerful weapon we have. Love or hate the Flat Earth, you are drawn into the discussion because you've had an opinion on it before you even knew why. The Flat Earth connects back to memories when the questions were simple and doesn't let go. Think this is a stretch? Ask someone their opinion on the Flat Earth and show me a person who says, Flat Earth? What's that? The movies don't have a lot of time to make their money back. 
Why's that, you ask? Competition. In 1979, when Star Trek The Motion Picture was released, there were like three channels, a TV, somebody had a radio, and a couple of movies were released each week. Today there's... Radio On Demand, Mobile Video, Netflix, Netflix Watch Now, Satellite Radio, Digital Cable, HD Cable, Blu-ray Players, Redbox, Internet Porno, Amazon.com, Amazon.com Watch Now, Amazon.com Watch Instantly, Amazon.com Watch Spontaneously, iTunes, Podcasts, iPhones, Online Web Series, IMAX Theater, Internet porno, video games, Wii, Xbox, PlayStation, video games you play live, Facebook, Facebook for mobile phone, HD flip video camera videos, HD flip video camera video web series, HD flip video camera video interactive web series uploaded to Facebook via iPhone 4 mobile uploader app, 3D movies, YouTube, bloggers, vlogs, Hulu, streaming video, and the zoo. Now because there are so many sources of entertainment, this has had what I call a blurring effect on modern pop culture. The further backwards in time you go, the sharper the memory most titles will be to the masses, and that's because there was less crap to sort through. If a movie has a title that people recognize, it'll add a lot of financial security to that project. Now while a remake is not necessarily a new thing, most people have noticed an increasing number of them in say the last five years. In fact, over 96% of films released by Hollywood in the last two years have been remakes. I shit you not, I did not make up that statistic. In the 90s, there was a couple remakes of TV shows for novelty's sake. It was just fun and tongue-in-cheek. But now it's getting fucking obnoxious to where it's mostly everything that's coming out now. And this ain't just limited to remakes of movies. It's basically anything that the general public might recognize. From old movies, to TV shows, to video games, comic books, and so on. In fact, I'm not putting it past Hollywood to make Snuggies the movie. You think I'm shitting you? Let's take a look at some recent remakes and movies that were made just because of their recognizable brand name. Clash of the Titans, Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, Get Smart, Alice in Wonderland, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Planet of the Apes, Aging, Starsky and Hutch, The Dukes of Hazzard, Poseidon, Scooby-Doo, Bewitched, Fat Albert, Shaggy Dog, Fantastic Four, Fantastic Four, Rise of the Cobra Surfer, G.I. Joe, Rise of the Cobra Surfer, Amityville Horror, Assault on Precinct 13, Halloween, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Dawn of the Dead, Death Race, Speed Racer, Rollerball, Karate Kid Remake with the Girl in It, The Remake of the Remake of the Karate Kid, Piranha, My Bloody Valentine, The Wicker Man, Robin Hood, The Wolf Man, Robin Hood again, Sherlock Holmes, The Stepfather, The Hills Have Eyes, When a Stranger Calls, Land of the Lost, House of Wax, Ocean's Eleven, War of the Worlds, The Day the Earth Stood Still, Curious George, Psycho, Elvin and the Chipmunks, Pink Panther, The Stepford Wives, I Am Legend, The Longest Yard, Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Hulk, The Hulk Remake of the Reboot, Fang, The Hitcher, Miami Vice, Charlotte's Web, The Heartbreak Kid, King Kong, Hairspray, The Omen. Don't forget about fraudulent sequels made 20 years later for no reason. Clerks 2, Basic Instinct 2, Tron 2, Wall Street 2, Indiana Jones 4, Live Free, Die Hard, X-Files, Rocky Balboa, Rambo, Universal Soldier, whatever, and Bambi 2?